Hi everyone. So last we were talking about what is second law efficiency. Um, and now I want to give you a practical example of how we could use it. So let's get right into it. In this case, we have a dealer and they're advertising. They just received a shipment of electric resistance heaters. Um, and these have an efficiency of 100%. And then it says, assuming an indoor temperature of 21 degrees Celsius and an outdoor temperature of 10 degrees Celsius, determine the second law efficiency of these heaters. I mean, your first thought might be, well, it's given, right? It, it's 100 percent efficient. Like you, you can't be better than that. Um, and I can completely understand why you would think that. And that could totally be true for the resistance heater by itself. Like just looking at that heater, is it doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing? The answer is probably yes. Like electric heaters are very, very efficient at turning power into heat. But here's the thing. I'm not interested in just turning power into heat. I'm interested in heating my home. I want to keep my home warm. And so whether that's me burning some firewood or using a resistance heater or using a heat pump, I don't really care what method it is. As a note, we're going to focus on electric methods, not just firewood. Um, I want it to just be as efficient at using my electricity as possible. Now, for a resistance heater, the best it can do is turn one unit of energy into one unit of heat. Because, you know, if we're just looking at it, conservation of energy simply says I have work going into the heater, no work goes out of the heater, and it's not, you know, beyond the very initial startup place, its temperature is not changing, so one unit of work turns into one unit of heat. Okay, then, well, how do I figure out the second law efficiency in this case? What am I comparing it to? Well, when you're always doing comparisons, think Carno. We had a few different things. We have a Carno heat engine. We're not trying to produce power, though. We have a Carno refrigerator. But we're not trying to keep it cold. And we have a Carno heat pump. And so the Carno heat pump is the one that tries to heat my house. And so that's what we're going to be comparing it to. So let's calculate the coefficient performance for a Carno heat pump. So that's simply going to be my heat pump efficiency which is one over one minus the low temperature over the high temperature. Make sure you put those in absolute units, otherwise everything goes wrong. And I get a coefficient performance of 26.7. So for a, the best system possible, I could move 26.7 units of heat into my home and it would only cost me one unit of energy. So I think you can already realize that this resistance heater is not the most efficient way of heating my house. And we can see that very easily by looking at our, co our, sorry, our second law efficiency. So since it takes one unit of heat for one unit of work, its coefficient performance is just one. And if I compare that to the best case scenario, you can see here that my, mine's only 3.7% as efficient as it possibly could be. As a note, when it comes to heating your home, um, like with heat pumps, like Unless you have a really high-end one, you're probably not going to get too terribly high here. I mean, like 15, 20% for residential is probably still pretty good um, for second law efficiency. It just depends what you're looking at. Heat engines are going to get closer to the 100% uh, of second law efficiency. Um, some things we can just have an easier time of making it work. But we're getting there. And this always shows us that we have room for improvement. So that's it this time. We can just see that the practic most practical way to heat my home is not a resistance heater, and I probably should try something different like a heat pump instead. So thank you for listening. I hope this helps you, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.